Okay, so I wanted to continue our discussion a little bit about the visual system because I was thinking back to how I explained some things in class today and I'm not, this is my thinking position, right? And I was, I wasn't 100% sure if I really made this as clear as I could have made it. And the reason is when I teach this class in a face-to-face -face setting, then I always draw something. But I didn't really have that opportunity today because we were doing it online. So what I thought I would do is, this is very short, I'll keep this as short as I can, but to give you just a little bit of extra information in a drawn, uh, well, drawn in my style, I'm not the greatest artist, but anyway, hopefully that will clarify a thing or two. And I could really use a little point, ooh, Roger, a skeleton cigarette holder, pointy device. Okay, so just a few things, very basic, right? Here we have the eye uh, with, again, don't, don't consider this to be a great anatomical uh, drawing because it's, it's just to give you some basics. The eyeball, we talked about the cornea and the uh, lens, right? And then here you would have a fovea. The fovea is not nearly as big as what I've drawn here, but this is just to show you that light refracts, right? Enters through the cornea, through the lens. And then whatever you're looking at is projected in a flipped fashion. So upside down, as, well, it doesn't work with this, but uh, upside down as well as left and right flipped on your fovea. Now, I wanted to talk because I'm pretty sure there was a little bit of confusion about that. So what about these different cells on the retina? Well, I've drawn it here. This is way out of proportion, way out of proportion. But just to give you an idea, so the back, the back of the retina, right, houses that pigmented epithelium. And then on top of that are the photoreceptors, the rods and cones. That is basically the deepest layer. Then they provide output to the bipolar cells and the bipolar cells provide output to the ganglion cells and it's those ganglion cells whose axons connect well not connect but collect are bundled up leave the back of the eyeball as the optic nerve which if you want to get into a slightly more advanced cognitive neuroscience that's a cranial nerve cranial nerves are specific nerves that allow us to interact with the world uh, at least the upper part of our body, our head and such. Uh, they deal with sensory information, they provide motor output to your face, may, allowing you, you know, to make faces and, and that kind of stuff. And they do some other stuff in some of your organs as well. But let's not get into that. The optic nerve. The optic nerve provides output. That bundle of ganglionic axons travels, as we discussed. Uh, part of it crosses over, part of it does not cross over. Remember, right? Uh, the part of the optic nerve, so about half of the fibers on the side of your temples, the temporal hemiretina, does not cross over. So that means that part of your right eye goes to the right side of your brain. But about the half of the optic nerve on the side of your nose, so the inside of that optic nerve, uh, that actually crosses over. So then input from your right eye goes into the left side of your brain. I just wanted to show you so you understand that progression. So photoreceptors, rods and cones closest to the base of the retina, then bipolar, then ganglion cells. And again, they don't stick out this far, not, not even close. It's just out of proportion, but you should give you the idea. Uh, that's pretty much it. And then you have that wiring that's complicated, the, the optic chiasm where those optic nerves, where they kind of cross over, right? We talked about that. And then you have 90% of the fibers uh, from the ganglionic axons from the optic nerve. Uh, they go to the lateral geniculate nucleus and 10% go to the superior colliculus. And from there, they, from the superior colliculus, they kind of go to the uh, lateral geniculate nucleus and to the, the visual cortex. And from the lateral geniculate nucleus in itself, that again receives about 90% of those axons. That information goes straight to uh, the visual cortex, V1, the primary visual cortex, the back of the head. Now, the final thing I want to discuss, and I think that's what was harder, uh, is, is this dreadful uh, on center off surround that stuff. So let me just grab a, a marker so I can write something if I have to. 
I want you to try and picture this as follows. So your retina is lined with rods and cones, but we're going to just talk about the fovea. That, remember that part where you have entire, there's just cones only, that really allows you to see something in focus, remember? Now that's a surface, it's a small surface, a very small surface, but picture it. It's an area of your retina that's just studded with all those photoreceptors, all those cones. I have tried to draw that like this, okay? So here you have just a set of photoreceptors. And as you can see, this cluster of photoreceptors has a center and it has cells around that. Well, the center we call a center and the cells around that, we call that a surround. Sometimes it's not as hard as it seems. But I think, I hope this is gonna make it clearer than the way I explained it in class. So, okay, we have a center, we have a surround. We're going to pretend that this is one photoreceptor, this is one, this is one, etc. In reality, you're talking about more cells, but I'm trying to keep this as simple as I can, just so you can picture it, okay? Just, re just remember that the reality is that much, much more, like many more cells are involved than I'm, I'm what I'm picturing here. Just a diagram. Now imagine what happens. This is one part of your retina, next to it is another part like this, next to it is another part like this, next to it is another part like this, until you have filled up the entire retina with photoreceptors, but as I said, we're really only talking about the fovea. Right, so you have a bunch of these clusters of photoreceptors. Now picture what happens. Now picture what happens. All these photoreceptors provide output to this, and that's a bipolar cell. This is really not what it looks like, this is just meant to be a diagram, okay? So you can see they all provide output, right? Each photoreceptor provides output to that bipolar cell. Now that bipolar cell needs to know what to do because it needs to talk to another cell and that cell up there, that would be a ganglion cell. We're not going to get into how that works because that's for this course not so relevant. If you want to learn that, teach sensa like take sensation and perception with me. For now, the photoreceptors provide output to bipolar which provides output to a ganglion cell. How does, it, how does this work and how does this on center off surround come into play here because that is incredibly confusing. There weren't a lot of questions about that if any but I know for a fact there were people struggling with that because if this is the first time you see that it's super confusing. Well look at it this way. Imagine I had the finest little beam of light with which I could stimulate just a few photoreceptors and we're going to pretend here that that's just a single photoreceptor. Beam of light so fine it just stimulates a single photoreceptor. Now picture what happens. If this bipolar cell is wired in such a way that we call it an on-center, off-surround cell. Yeah? On-center, off-surround cell. Then this cell will get excited, will pass on an excited signal to the ganglion cell if, if the center of its receptive field is stimulated, but this cell will provide an inhibitory signal to the ganglion cell if its surround is stimulated. And that's really all there is to it. Now let's reason that through. I have my super fine beam of light and I point it there. I shouldn't do it this way because I can't control this thing. There. That's where I'm shining my super fine beam of light. It doesn't stimulate this. It, doesn't stimu it only stimulates this. On center, off surround. Now the receptive field of this bipolar cell is stimulated. It is an on-center bipolar cell. And now this bipolar cell is going to say, excitement. And it's going to send an excitatory signal to the ganglion cell. Now how that works with the specific neurotransmitters, let's not worry about that. Now picture the other situation. My very narrow beam of light is stimulating this area. In other words, the surround the surround of the receptive field that provides output to this cell. Well, it's an on-center, off-surround bipolar cell. Result, if I stimulate this area with light, the surround of that receptive field, that cell is gonna say, inhibition. Inhibit my signal, it will provide the ganglion cell with an inhibitory signal. Now, if you really want to know, ganglion cells fire action potentials at a fairly steady rate, about one per second. If, if 
this is stimulated on on center off surround bipolar cell then this bipolar cell is going to tell that ganglion cell cell instead of going 21 22 23 go faster fire action potentials like that if its surround is stimulated then this bipolar cell is going to tell the ganglion cell not 21 22 23 not your standard firing rate but slower 21 22 I'm, I'm making up this timing exaggerating a bit so you get the point right and then the ganglion cell thinks oh oh gotta knock it off fire fewer action potentials because the surround of this on center off surround cell is stimulated that's kind of it and that story can reverse as well because this could not be an on center off surround bipolar cell but an off center on surround bipolar cell the principle is the same, it's just the other way around. Now, for an off-center, on-surround bipolar cell, if I hit that narrow beam of light in the center of the retina, in the center of, sorry, in the center of its receptive field, I should say, then this cell is going to say, oh, inhibition. Let's inhibit the receiving ganglion cell, because after all, it is off-center, but on-surround. So if I stimulate any part of the receptive field, the receptive field surround, off center, on surround, and this bipolar cell is going to say, ah, ganglion cell, increase your firing rate. It didn't work just now, but now it does. That's it. On center, off surround, off center, on surround. Now, this is a stepwise thing because the ganglion cells will have their own receptive field. Pho photoreceptors are a receptive field for a bipolar cell but a set of bipolar cells is a receptive field for a ganglion cell and that's that compression of information we talked about we have to go from uh, something like a hundred million plus photoreceptors to at the end of the day about a million ganglion cells you have to compress the signal you have to make it finer and finer right that's it I hope this explanation was clearer than what I did in class because I found myself a little unclear and when your instructor feels a little unclear that's not a good thing so let me know if this was helpful and if you now understand this concept better okay that's all I have see you in class